Hi, I'm Luca, and today I will talk to you about our robotics project. The objective of our project is the both theoretical and practical study of a Cartesian manipulator using dynamics and control DH parameters implemented in MATLAB and Simulink. Starting from the DH parameters, we choose the frame according to the Devin-Antelman convention. We then reported the result in this DH table and we used to compute the transformation matrix. Under MATLAB, we can implement the DH parameter using the command link, which can define theta, di, AI, AI, alpha, and sigma, which can be 1 or 0 according to the type of joint, 1 for prismatic and 0 for revolut. We then we made a test plot using the command plot of the class serial link to have a practical representation. Talking about the differential kinematics, we explained in the report how we obtain our Jacobian. Under the MATLAB, we discovered that our, our determinant of the Jacobian is not null, so there are no singularities in the configuration. Talking about the trajectory, during the lesson we studied the cubic polynomial trajectory and the trapezoidal trajectory. Under MATLAB, using the mtragy function, we can implement the trapezoidal velocity trajectory. In fact, we can recognize the constant cruise velocity interval and, in the acceleration, a constant phase acceleration and a constant deceleration phase towards the final position. We can play with many commands uh, thanks to the Peter Cork uh, toolbox. For instance, we can use the, the Jetragi command, which implements a fifth order polynomial we can recognize by the graph of the acceleration. Talking about the dynamics, we explained in the report how we obtained B and G. The result is that we can see that in our case, B is constant and it does not depend on the configuration. Since we don't have any revolute joint, the term CQ is null since there are not centrifugal and colloidal forces. Then the FV, the term FV is neglected just to study a simpler system. Under MATLAB, we can give link masses, inertia links, gear ratio links, inertia motor masses, and so on, like shown in the code. Then we implemented, thanks to the Peter Cork inertia command, the B matrix. And, as we expected from the theory, it is a constant diagonal matrix, which is independent on the configuration. The control is the core of the project. Using the, the formulas that we studied in the lecture, we gave reasonable values, like a low armature resistance. Then, we designed a position, velocity and acceleration control starting from the values of the natural frequency of the poles, omega n, the damping factor zeta, and the rejection factor xr. We obtained kp, then ka, and then kv, and, as shown below, there are the results. All these controllers have been implemented with Simulink. First, we can recognize, at the left, the converted trajectory. It was converted in MATLAB using the time series command. Then, we can see all the blocks, like uh, scope and uh, to workspace, which have been used to export data from Simulink to MATLAB. Moreover, we can clearly recognize the three blocks used to implement the, con the position controller, the velocity controller, and the acceleration controller. On the right, we can see that there is the negative feedback, which represents the back electromotive force. All of this is followed by a gain block in which we put KR, the gear ratio, KT, and RA, the armature resistance matrix. Inside the manipulator, we can notice that the, gra the gravitational disturbance G is not feedback from the position since it does not depend on the configuration. Then, we implemented the, the inverse of B matrix inside a gain block, since it is constant. It is followed by two integral blocks, 
because we need to acquire the velocity and the position from the acceleration. Inside these two blocks, we put the position and the velocity initial condition. Now let's talk about the simulation result. If you use a high gear ratio with a high ejection factor, we can see that in this case we obtain the best behavior since the control trajectory will follow exactly the ideal one. If instead we keep the gear ratio high but with low rejection factor, we will see a little oscillation around the ideal trajectory since we don't have enough rejection factor to suppress this kind of oscillation. If instead we use the direct actuation with high rejection factor, we will see an initial error at the beginning and then the control trajectory will follow the ideal one. It's also interesting to see what happens if we use a uh, low value of gear ratio with a low value of uh, rejection factor. The result will be an oscillating behavior since uh, the gear ratio is not high enough to suppress the non-linearity of the dynamics and the system and at the same time we don't have enough rejection factor to suppress the oscillation. Now let's just run the code and see the results. That's the best behavior. And the oscillating one. Thank you for your attention.